Hi guys, welcome to Tech City Insights. I'm Bella Rizokoji. On the show today, we'll be taking a look at an underground community of comic book lovers. Yes, and that's stemming in the tech ecosystem. These are a group of people who have common interests, shared interests, especially when it comes to sci-fi, and very specifically, comic books. There is also an online platform that's curating all of this in the Nigerian uh, narrative and even in Africa. A group of young men who have come together to save and uh, document the comic culture of Nigerians and Africans and of course uh, they have set up a platform for lovers of these kinds of content to visit in order to satisfy that interest and that uh, uh, hunger for. Joining me today on Tech City Insights is Tolu Foye. It's nice to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me about Kugali Media. Kugali Media is an online platform with one major goal help people discover African narratives. So when I say African narratives, mm -hmm. I'm talking comics, video games, sci-fi, fantasy, TV shows, animations, the whole enchilada. But right now we're focusing mainly on comics. Why is that? Because we have more comics in okay. this space than anything else. So I mean, for every game you find, created in Africa, you're going to find maybe five comics. Mm. And we specifically, as, as a community, geeks generally like fantasy and sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Nollywood, for example, you're not going to see a lot of fantasy True. or sci-fi. In fact, when you look at the entire African film industry, mm -hmm. you're not going to see a lot of those things. They're, they are few and far between. So while we have discovered quite a few, we realize that if we want to promote these stories, mm -hmm. we best start from comics and then we can um, expand into the others. How did Kugali Media start? What was the uh, idea behind setting up? Why did you bother to even uh, gather all of these and make it available for anyone who was interested? Oh, it's really simple. Discoverability. Mm. When we started, the question was, "Hey guys, we've so we've been we grew up watching Dragon Ball Z and Spider Man uh -huh. and everything. Almost everything we grew up loving and playing came from America or Japan. Mm -hmm. And then some of us who founded Kugali are creators ourselves. Okay, we have we have a comic writer." We have a video game developer. So as creators ourselves, the question came up like, are there other creators like us? Mm -hmm. And is their work good quality? Okay. Or is it the kind of work you would look at and roll your eyes at? So the big question for us was, do African comics exist? Do good ones exist? Mm -hmm. And the only thing of the uh, when we started having this conversation, the only thing we knew off the top of our heads were Super Strikers and yeah. the Indomitables. Uh -huh. And the Indomitables is really more of a marketing um, tool than it is a comic, mm -hmm. if you ask me. So we set out to look for these things to find out if they even existed. And when we started finding them, and finding more than we thought we would and mm. some were better than we thought they would be and we thought okay so these things exist but no one can find them because mm -hmm. nobody knows where to look mm -hmm. so we created a place. who are these guys that you talk about so right now there are two major comic publishers in nigeria okay but there are quite a few other independent comic publishers okay and then in the rest of africa almost every country has comic creators mm. and then we discovered something we were not looking for we had Africa in mind when we started when you say we who are we <laughs> okay, so we when I say we I'm referring to Kugali media myself and my co-founders Ziki and Demi okay when we started we had Africans in mind mm -hmm. what we didn't anticipate is the diaspora there is a very large, very vocal, very active community of people from of African descent mm -hmm. all around the world who want to see stories that 
include people or stories that show people that look like them. Mm. Stories that include people that look like them. So I grew up in Nigeria. I've been in Nigeria all my life. Okay. I've gotten tired of seeing, I, I put on the TV and they're showing something from Nollywood and <laughs> I might think this isn't great, this movie isn't nice and I may overlook it. But there are many people in, in other countries who may be a minority there. So maybe 10% of the population may be of African descent mm -hmm. and the rest of the population is from, are people of other races. Mm -hmm. So they hardly see themselves on TV. So for them, it's a big deal seeing themselves on TV. It's a big deal seeing dark-skinned characters in comics. Mm. It's a big deal seeing Africans in comics. And I didn't realize this until after I started this journey. Okay. I didn't realize there were many people outside of Africa who desperately want to and desperately need to see themselves or see people who look like them in the media and the entertainment they consume. Beyond the color of skin, right, and uh, how, how much more content people are creating in that, in that space, when you look at the kind of comics that you're happening upon, the storylines, how relatable are they? How, how African or how Nigerian really are they? Especially when you look at the fact that some of these comic publishers get inspired by the Marvels and the DCs of, 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 of now. Yes, that is one ongoing conversation we've had on our platform. Okay. So, um, I'm going to backtrack now. Okay. Kugali started off as a podcast. Aha. Uh -huh. The Dao of Otaku podcast. Okay. Even that, even that name is inspired by cu cultures outside of Africa. Mm. So, Dao is a word that means the way. When you hear um, the Dao of X, it means the way of X. What language? Japanese? No, close enough. It's, Chinese? Yes, it's Aha. from Buddhism. And ah, I see. So, then otaku is the Japanese word for geek. So you see, when <laughs> we first started, even we were mainly inspired by our love for Japanese animations mm -hmm. and such things. So we started with a podcast called The Dao of Otaku, which would basically mean the way of the geek. Mm. But when we started the podcast and we started looking for and reading comics created in Nigeria and in the rest of Africa, mm -hmm. we discovered that many of them were not original. They felt like Marvel or DC comics, but set in Lagos. Right. With Nigerian <laughs> characters. And names. And, and, names. <laughs> and everything about it mm. is still Marvel and DC mm -hmm. in style. So we started having this conversation if I remember correctly, it should be episode three of our podcast where okay. we talked about appropriation versus inspiration. Ah. We're like, okay, I, where, where do you draw the line between I'm inspired by this culture and I'm inspired by these creators mm. or I am pretty much appropriating their culture? Where do you draw that line? And what we discovered is m many of our local comic creators are going through a process, let me say it's a growing or learning process okay. since the industry is still very young mm -hmm. here, where they start off creating things that are just Nigerian versions of Western media. Mm. But as time goes on, you see that they start to become more original. They start shedding they all start, of the but Some of them, of course, there are exceptions to every rule. Some comics right from the start were 100% Nigerian in style and okay. everything. And then, surprisingly, one of the best comic series we've discovered, or one of the best creators as a whole, is not even African. There's this company called Midas Monkey. All right. It's an American company. The creator is, he's a um, French Caribbean. Okay. But he's been to a few countries African in Africa, countries. and he did a lot of research. He, I find that his work is more originally African than most of what we have here. And the quality is really, really good. So over time, that was why we rebranded from the Dao of Otaku, we changed the name to Kugali. What does Kugali mean? Kugali is 
a misspelling of a Swahili phrase. The original Swahili phrase is Akujali, uh -huh. which means... Oh, and apologies to anyone if you <laughs> understand the language and I mispronounce that because okay. we, I only know how to spell it. Right. <laughs> but Akujali means um, something that cannot be ignored, something mm -hmm. noticeable. So we rebranded to Kugali, which just is supposed to be things that stand out in the African um, storytelling space. Beautiful. Now, for the uh, creators or the uh, publishers, writers who you host on your platform, are there any requirements or is it just any comic you see that's perhaps made in Nigeria or Africa or just has, you know, information about Africa in it that you host on your platform? Are there any requirements that need to be met? Yeah, so we started out by looking for only the best things and by best we, we select based on production values okay so when you look at a blockbuster movie for mm -hmm. example the movie may be terrible when you watch it the storyline may not make sense and the movie may get poor reviews but you cannot deny the fact that this movie had a big budget and maybe the graphics were nice mm. and the um, set, everything was executed well, but maybe the movie itself was poor. Mm. So what we're saying is, if the production values are high, if this is good quality, at least you can see an effort was put in. Even if we think, oh, the story is not too good, that's not for us to judge, because anything of artistic nature is open to interpretation. Indeed. And people have different tastes. Mm -hmm. So we may read something and personally not be too excited, but when we look at it, is the art good? Is it, are there grammatical errors in the comic? So once the comic meets a certain standard of production values or quality, and it is um, African, it is created by an African or someone of African descent, or it tells an African story mm -hmm. in one way or another, then we put it on our platform. So. Someone from Japan, for all I know, could tell a genuine African story okay. and we could put it on our platform. But someone from Nigeria could potentially tell a story that we feel there's nothing Nigerian about this mm. and it may not be on our platform. So the requirements are usually the production values and how, how much it's um, how much it tells an African story. So are we looking at uh, text content? Are we looking at videos? Uh, what are you heavy on? I would say what we what we are heaviest on would be, I, I wouldn't call it text content. So our platform is kind of a week, it's, it's similar to a wiki. We are supposed to be able to go there, find comics, look at images from mm -hmm. the comics, maybe get a synopsis, if there's a video, maybe a trailer. Okay. We would put that there. If we if we have a, if we've interviewed the creator, for okay. example, we would put that there. Like I said, we started out as a podcast, mm -hmm. so even before we created the platform to curate all these comics, we had already started interviewing creators. Oh, nice. So we have a YouTube channel. So we do we do audio podcast we do video that is still YouTube. on your podcast is still on yes right now the podcast is on a break after okay. the we took a break after each season so we've done okay. three seasons Amazing. and we are currently on a break we are not we've not decided when season four starts yet okay <laughs> we've not decided what when season four starts yet but even after we stopped after the end of season three we've uh -huh. released three episodes because sometimes something may come up mm. that is urgent and we feel okay we need to discuss this um, maybe we owe it to the community to mm. talk about this topic so we could release a standalone podcast episode okay but we have not started the fourth season yet how exactly do you make money from this so we make money in a few ways okay. but one of the major ways is helping creators sell so our platform every comic on our platform we have a link to where you can get the comic even if that place is not on our site because we want people to be able to say 
where okay i'm looking for a good comic from ghana and they're supposed to be able to come to our site search for it find a comic from ghana okay they found this comic now how do they get it there's a link there that takes it, you it could go to the creator's site for example okay but when the creator we've partnered with some of these creators so that the comics are directly um you can get the comics directly from us okay so in that case there's a profit split for every sale we make of the comic we get a cut that's the only way you make money that is the major way major okay. because when it comes to youtubing podcasting blogging there's always the um, there's always the option of making money through ads mm. even yeah. though we decided to keep ads out of our blog okay but youtube and podcasting is a different schedule of now when you look at the kind of people who consume your content what kind of feedback are you getting from them people who consume who go to kugali and they see what they are looking for what what, what kind of testimonials do you get like what i said earlier that there are people that there was an entire community in mm -hmm. the diaspora that i wasn't aware of mm. until i started i think they are the most passionate and most vocal of our users because like i said those of us here don't we we're not hungry <laughs> to see certain things because we are not starved of those things so you find someone from brazil who finds our website for the first time and it's like a dream come true for him it's like he's never seen so many black comics in one place before it's like this is amazing you find someone with there was this guy who he he's from his name i know his parents are nigerian okay. but he's never been to nigeria he was born in the uk and okay. he grew up there when this guy discovered our podcast i noticed that that week our stats he he binged like he binged the entire podcast I from can the imagine. first episode to where we were at that mm. point. I think he must have listened to some episodes twice. Over and over again. Because <laughs> I look I looked at the stats and I'm like, okay. I think by, back then we were at maybe episode twenty three. Uh -huh. And this guy had listened forty times. I was like, How do you get Ooh, forty listens from twenty three episodes? episodes. <laughs> so those are the most vocal mm. people, the people in the diaspora, the black Americans, especially those who are woke and woke is a black <laughs> american term it is so they are the most vocal they are the most passionate they are the most supportive and th let me say there's also a lot of racial controversy sometimes around comics and games and such things that i was completely oblivious to mm. before we started kugali so i would say that the reaction on the continent is usually more from the creators there's a, a there's more interest from the creators okay than the consumers on the continent because the creators see that okay this is a place they can um showcase their work this is a place they can sell and there's the community aspect mm -hmm. so we actively engage in conversations with the creators and we have um so we have a Facebook group okay. where people can just, you know, talk about these things. We interview these creators, so we have one-on-one -on -one relationships with them. There's the community aspect, but I find that on the continent, the creators are the ones who are engaging more. Okay. It's outside Africa where the fans engage a lot. Then there are also the fans who, there are also we also have a few listeners to, of our podcast, podcast and uh -huh. a few people who visit our website who are not interested because they are of african descent they're just interested because they've seen something different and they like it so we that's have that's what kugali means anyway right exactly <laughs> so we have I would, this one always surprises me i still haven't figured out why but israel is one of the highest um, most of our let me say in our top five listens on our podcast by country israel is always somewhere in the top five wow. like month on month it fluctuates obviously so sometimes the u.s might be number one okay. and nigeria might be number two or something it but fluctuates israel but israel always. has consistently been in the top five since mm. we started podcast and i'm like 
what are what are what what are they even looking for? Like, <laughs> what are these really really looking for? Now? Yeah, it's like, like I, so it's, I find that interesting. Like, mm. and we found there was a time um, we interviewed a creator who was making this video game called Democracy Three okay. Africa. Okay. So there's this guy Cliff Harris from the UK mm -hmm. who has been making this game series Democracy. It's a political simulation game and okay. he had made Democracy 1, 2, 3. Then after Democracy 3, he got personally interested in Africa. He started supporting community projects. Uh -huh. Then he decided to do like a remix of Democracy 3. So he was creating Democracy 3 Africa featuring 10 African countries of, you know, the usual suspects, Nigeria, South, South Africa, Africa and, uh, Kenya. And, yes. <laughs> so he was making this game and he got um, someone to partner with him to make the game. Um, that's at Stargazy Studios, Jeff. So Jeff, we interviewed Jeff on our podcast. And I've kept in touch with Jeff after the interview and I realized like, he still comes to our platform. He is not because he's of African descent or anything, but he likes some of the things he discovered. Mm -hmm. He likes some of the things he discovered. We've had um, someone like Federico Ponce, who's Mexican American, I believe, and he also said, like everyone in, in his office, they listen to the podcast together. So we found that very interesting mm. because. When we started it, we were not even sure who we were doing it for. Right. We just thought, okay, let's just start looking. Do good African comics mm -hmm. even exist in the first place? Mm. So it's very, I would say the response has been very mixed because you think, oh, maybe you're going to get a lot of um, fan fandom from Nigeria. But, but then you it's don't. It's almost like the reverse is the case. Yes, you get more fans outside from outside. Shows. What would you say are the biggest challenges you have faced in how long have you been in business? Kugali Media, how old is Kugali Media? I would say Kugali is about one and a half years old okay. because, like I said, we rebranded. But when we started, we started the Dao Votaku August 2015. Okay. And after running the Dao Votaku for, I guess, maybe four to six months, we rebranded to Kugali. Mm. So. What challenges have you faced since maybe starting off or even rebranding? What are the things that oh, you have the, to... the biggest challenge is definitely monetizing because there's the thing of, okay, you're doing this for the passion, you're doing this for the love of the medium, but then there's also the part of, are you adding value? And if you're adding value, then who is back? willing to pay for this value you're adding? So the hardest thing has definitely been monetizing. Mm. Would you say you have any competition right now? Do you have any? I don't think we have any competition because there are a few people we've seen who do something similar to what we do but nobody in the world because we, we really really searched. Mm. Nobody actually has a database that just curates comics. We started right now I've been saying comics, but when we started, we were doing comics, games, games film TV, mm -hmm. film slash TV. So we it was we ran a beta website, which okay. is still up right now, so people can still see it. Beta.kugali.com. All right. And we had a section for comics, a section for games, and a section for film TV. And what we discovered was okay, if we're going to go ahead with this, is we better focus more on one place and then when, maybe when we get that rolling properly, we can bring in the others, which is why when we launched the full website, mm -hmm. kugali.com, we launched only with the comics section. Okay. So, there is no one else in the world that curates these things. There are blogs. Oh. You, you definitely find blogs. You'll find YouTube channels. Mm. You'll find some podcasts, but there is no database. So we are essentially like Wikipedia for African comics. I like how you put that. Just before we go, uh, what exactly is the future for Kugali? How do you hope to scale um, and offer the service that you're offering right now on a much wider 
uh, stage. So the industry is very young right now mm. and the industry is still growing and many conversations are still being had as to what exactly should go and what shouldn't. So we have we have been an active part of these conversations with the creators and with the fans and what we are looking forward to is when the industry gets to a stable position mm -hmm. such that you can predict certain things so right now there is no african comic that that has up to 15 issues maybe they create the first comic and issue two comes out later and issue three and it's usually not at a steady release schedule so it might be one maybe two or three issues come out in, in the one year. year and then eventually maybe around issue six or seven the comic drops off and you, you never hear from them anymore that has been the trend so we want to change that we want to be able to say that there are some comics that come out every month mm. or every two months and that will only happen if it's lucrative enough for the creators because if the creator is making his comic and it's not he's not getting enough from it but he's doing it because of his passion he's going to do something else on the side to support yeah thank you so much tolu for your coming on the show today all the best with kugali media thank and you. our fingers are crossed we'll see when kugali magazine will be published ending of june or early july all this how are you reachable so i think the easiest way to reach us right now is on our facebook and twitter okay at kugali media we're on instagram also okay. at kugali media all right and then of course you can go to our website there are links to send us emails mm -hmm. and everything or if you want to be a part of the community there is the kugali facebook group okay you join the group it's not just the it's not just us they are creators they are fans mm -hmm. so there's lots of people to interact with and the group page is the group page is kugali just search for Kugali on, on Facebook. Facebook. Kugali Affirmation Comics okay. and Games. Alrighty. <laughs> and that's where we stop the conversation today on Tech City Insights. We have been talking to the co-founder of Kugali.com. They are the Wikipedia of comics in this part of the world. If there is anyone of particular interest to you and you'd like for us to get an insight into what they do in promoting and advancing the tech ecosystem in Nigeria or even extensively Africa, leave a comment in the section right below with their names and exactly what they do and we will fish them out for you. I'm Bella Rizukoji. We'll see you next time on Text the insights.